Five minutes and 17 seconds and counting to the start of race number 11. It will be Ineos Team UK, Britannia against Patriot from American Magic. American Magic turning around after their 1 minute and 13 second loss just basically moments ago against Emirates Team New Zealand. Shirley Robertson's on the water for us, the best eyes on the water. It's going to be another interesting battle to see how Dean Barker responds from that slight mistake which cost him so much, Shirley. Well, I bet we feel slightly robbed in that race, and I bet he does as well. Um, you know, they're going well, aren't they? They're starting they're starting great, real good execution, and they're fast. So, you know, he'll want to he wants to put on a good showing in this race. Slightly lighter conditions, it's just fading as we go into the evening here in Auckland, but still very much to me looks like it's right-hand side dominant, and I think we can expect to see that strategy play, play a part in, uh, in their pre-race pre strategy. Just a quick update to wherever you are watching this around the world, that we will be staying with the racing. There are still two more races to go till 7 o'clock local time, till 7 o'clock local time, so we can find out who does win this Prada America's Cup World Series. And right now in the the box seat, our Emirates Team New Zealand with four points ahead of the three points owned by American Magic and Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. So it is going to come down to the last race, and that's what you want in any sport, in any racing. And here's hoping that Britannia, Rita, uh, highlighted in red, the name that Sir Ben Ainsley has named all his Olympic yachts handles the light air a lot better this time around. Let's hope. I mean, there's two the two storylines right now are improvement for the for the Brits and can they keep the boat out of the water and going in this light air? They've got a bigger jib up, that's for sure this time around. But the second storyline is the quick turnaround. Imagine the short teams piling onto American Magic to get it prepped batteries charged all kinds of you know all the checks that they need to do to make sure that that boat's ready to go for a second race in such a really short turnaround time two minutes and 50 and counting to the port entry which will be Ineos team uk the port entry boats are allowed in at two minutes and 10 seconds and then two minutes american magic patron coming from the starboard entry This seems to be a trend. They, they keep these boards down a long time to try to slow the boat down a bit. Don't come off your foil. Okay, coming away. Hard down. Just confirmation, dude. This Hard will down. be a five big race. A five big race. It will be an upwind finish. Uh, coming up. Hello, five. Keep going. Coming up. Chances over that line and in early. Yep, penalty. Missed by about a half a length, and you could hear Ben say, ah, oh, jeez, and there's a starboard tacker coming his way. Yeah, this is not shaping up well at all for Enios Team UK. It's going to have to almost jive to get in from that position. And it all stems back to what happened probably a minute before the start, where they place that jive as they're coming in on entry. I remember listening, hearing their chat, and they said yeah. it might be a little bit early here. Okay. That's when you glide on the four boards, or the three boards the down. Uh, we hear they are now GBR off the have an early entry penalty. Okay. Off the foil penalty. right away. So a penalty and off the foils. Okay, 18. Not the greatest of pre-starts, and oh, the breeze okay. is dying out there. Quickest now. question, how do you erase the penalty? Well, after the start, they're going to have to drop back. Is it two boat lengths behind American Magic after the start? So on the course side of the starting line, but that's going to be easy to do. Drop back that two boat lengths if you're not up in the foils. That's going to happen in a second. The further question, can you erase it before the start? No. Well, the other thing you can do is you can offset it against the other boat. We saw yesterday that Jimmy Spittle got very aggressive when he got an early entry penalty. He attacked Dean Barker and tried to get the penalty erased. So if if you Ben can here, he's now on starb attack. He no, could go yeah, after can. American Magic and try and offset nice. the penalty so they both start with no penalties. Little over 30 seconds to the start yeah, right. of Take your your head. Head. race number 11. Copy, copy full speed. Two races to go your, in this your wheel 12 down. race Prada My America's wheel. Cup World Series. Yeah, Just no, think of it. 12 Just race speed. 72 Got hours. How good is that? I'll bring you up. But Ineos Team UK sitting with yeah, that penalty on them for early entry. 
crossing yeah. button. Five legs of racing. Yep. American Magic Pressing need building. this win yep. to pressure Emirates Team New Zealand to get a result in Zino Rosa in the last Come race. On, Here we go. No yeah. problem on him. Two, one, and up. Mix him up, mix him up. It's interesting that Giles Scott was steering okay. the boat in that yeah, pre start Ben was delivered. Yeah, now they've swapped out. I must try and this stick is the umpires, GBR, GBR, you still have a penalty. Yeah. And what do you think, Don't Nathan? worry about that, Richard, it'll come off soon enough, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, for all of you at home, that okay. was the voice Any of Richard time. Slater, our chief umpire, telling Ineos like that they had a penalty. And then ah, Ben Ainsley wow. came on and said, Don't worry, Richard, Thanks, that penalty's gonna come off soon yeah. enough, mate. Go here, guys. Sure Box enough, down. they dropped right in behind. That's gotta be frustrating when you already know that the penalty's just gonna be sitting. Pretty much the moment you do your first tack, they're struggling to foil, they're almost foiling. Nothing, I don't think they're gonna take off there and you can see their speed, 15 yep. knots, they still have the penalty. Yep, thanks GBR, penalty that's clear. It's going to be clear, yeah. There thanks, you go, Richard. penalty clear now. American Magic mate, the foiling tack. Okay, here and we go. Are Make me on. Just disappear into the distance right now. Track me up. Oh, my goodness. I'm under the water with Shirley Robinson. Right, what did you make of this, Shirley? Oh, it's hard to watch, isn't it, Stephen? I mean, you. you you know, I mean, we're all well aware of tens of thousands of man hours of design of blood, sweat and tears to get to, to this again, point. Uh, it's really knots. difficult to watch. And, um, you know, any of us have a lot to do if they're going to be, if they're going to get it together by the Prada Cup. This is, this is difficult. I mean, what is it, Nathan, looking at it? I mean, is there... Is there anything that just sort of jumps out that, that's not right? Well, it, to me, it looks like for the same yeah, amount of boat speed, seconds, they can't guys. produce the same amount of lift on their foils. So when you exit attack and both boats Two, here were doing one, low twenties, American Magic looked like they're foiling Turn just fine. So maybe the Ineos foils, either the the area of the foil is less, and so it's not creating enough lift or the section of the foil or the flap range or something to do with the foils is just not creating enough lift yes. at slow speeds. Once they're up doing 30 knots, the boat seems to be going just there fine. Go. It's just the bottom speeds and that that foil must be stalling. You know, it, these foils are really difficult to design and engineer and you target the design for various different speeds and they must have not targeted the lower end. Again, that was just a straight line boat speed we just saw, and you know what? They appear to be going just fine. UK, 27 knots. USA, 26 knots. This is the common theme. Fine in a, a straight line, and tough when you got to turn. American Magic with that 380 odd meter lead on the team Ineos UK in a race 11 of the Prada America's Cup World Series, and the constant theme with Ineos Team UK at the moment, at least today, is just getting up in those foils and light air. You've heard Nathan Arridge, who is our foiling aficionado, talk about maybe the foils aren't right. I suppose the other question is, that combined with the foils, then you've got to think about whether you've got the sail combinations right. No question. And, and again, I think the systems that these teams are using to control, especially that twin skin mainsail design and setup, which is brand new to the sport of sailing, by the way. The teams that can load them up the best, that can really create depth when you need the, when you need the lift at slow speeds, that can create lots of depth in those sails, seem to be staying up on the foil a little bit longer so it's so simple to say from here that it's just one thing but unfortunately it's it's a combination of so many variables yep. absolutely it's a combination of so many variables we're just talking about two things we're talking about foils and sails but there's plenty more going on than that American Magic approaching the top mark for the first time remember this will be the finish at the end of five legs an upwind finish and they look as smooth as silk. They'll want a clean run this time round. Small okay, building three. On the box, is in 20 seconds. Nice bit of spray off that foil, wasn't there? 60% anytime. Okay. 
Did he say 60%? 60%. Of the time, every yep. time? The box is only in 10 here, Ben. Yeah. Be sure of it. He was speaking uh, British, so I, I'm not sure I'm the best. You, you guys might be better. At Shirley, what was Goody <laughs> trying to explain to the world right there? Well, polka distance from Rotherham yeah, in, the, in the north of England, and the whole different kind of, of Britain. He said 60% any time. I think with a slight hint of sarcasm, like he needed, you know, he needed power or he needed something, uh, and he wanted it. You know, when they got round to it. The wheel coming up with 23 hands. Yeah, that's good there. Okay, bearing away in two, one, go down. Yours. Yeah, my wheel. Okay, building here. Nice Any odds, Team UK, get that mark. It's around a minute to behind American Magic. And away okay. they go down on the second leg, the downwind leg. Big bad waves coming here in five. Back on the wheel of Sabine Ainsley. You know, they, we haven't even talked okay, about nice the hull shapes, too, uh, guys. The, the, you know, we talked about the foils, the foil above the deck and the foil below the water line, but we haven't talked about the hull shapes. And yeah, you know, maybe right, this hull shape is unbelievably okay, unconventional hull shape. Uh, 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 is draggy yeah, I think at, we get in those low speeds. Three, you know, so. it, it could be something yep. as simple yeah, as that. Just it, past. Okay, I, I wouldn't even know where to start I, yep. with regards down. to Happy. looking at a boat like yeah. this because frankly none of us have ever seen boats like this before but it is different it's diff it's very different from the rest of the fleet well Ken we've got part of the duration of this race to, to talk and come up with some theories to me if the boat's in the air then the under hull shape is not really going to be particularly draggy unless you start talking about aerodynamics okay, but for sure if the boat's in the water and they've said hard to take off. Maybe that square, long, I guess, fin or old style skeg, skeg, yeah. skeg is, um, is, is too draggy to help generate enough speed for the foil to then engage and lift the boat out of the water. We can we can talk for hours, but I'm sure there's some clever designers who really know the answers. But for the basic viewers watching around the world at the America's Cup race village, the simple principle is that the lower you are out of the water, but you stay dry, you don't touch the water, it's simply for aero to cut out, cut out any wash. Okay. Yeah, it's essentially, okay. it's okay. lengthening okay. the sail plan yeah. right down yeah. to okay. the water, if Coming you think of it. It's adding, it's yep. adding power to the entire sail plan. So these boats are trying to fly low without, as Nathan said on day one, without don't stick it in the water because that creates more hydro drag. You're just trying to just kiss the top of the water and, in essence, lengthen the sail yeah, plan, the make the sails that much head. bigger and more powerful. Every team has these Probably. long skegs along the bottom of the boat. Nice You're looking here at American Magic. They have it at the front and sort of goes through the middle and then it tapers okay, so right up, but eight. their skeg is really sharp. It's really pointy on the underside. And to me, it looks like if the boat ever touches, which you see just every now and then, it's not very draggy, it's just a little okay. touch in and out. The spray that comes in there is not the first. Up a couple. Can you ask nice like that. It's almost half a meter wide and it's flat, and so it okay, bounces 24. off the water with significant amounts of drag. Here we go. Slick package here right now, and, and in the lighter air, they have to be really, really psyched because, we'll you know, we, we were. We were speculating, and that's our job. We were speculating at the beginning of the broadcast is this lighter air may not be to their liking, but they don't even have their biggest jib on right now. And uh, we saw them hang right in there with Emirates Team New Zealand in that last race, except for one small error. And uh, they obviously look good in this race. American Magic. They go around the gate. Nice step. And hit up on leg number three of five. That was the bottom gate, the downwind gate. Now they're going back upwind. And their advantage on He's Ineos Team in UK is sizable. Despite that, it makes a pretty Little big street, doesn't it? <laughs> Summer's day in Auckland City. A lot of boats out there today watching. And hello to Auckland, and thank you for being our hosts here. We, we, we all we love being here right now. It's just an amazing place to sail. Okay, okay. two, one, four, down and turning. Good, 
nice and smooth, but not a bad jive. That was, boy, look at the amount of depth they're creating down low in that, in that sail right now. Almost like... Might have to two board soak, he says. That's it. We got it, we got it. Very late on the camber. Stand by turn up, sharp one here Yep. Bottom mark running by Ineos Team UK. They're in deficit of 1 minute and 15 seconds to American Magic as they start leg number 3 of 5. Top left is always better pressure, huh? Okay, keep the speed here for the next tank. 135. It's a little bit lighter this way. One thing that's worth picking up purely from a, a novice's uh, angle, Nathan, is okay, they... setting up for attack, guys. When, when you look from the, the stern okay, end, two. One, both slide. Down. They, they slide. They do slide. They have Turning. what we call leeway and sometimes negative leeway. And, and that's caused by the fact that the foil on the underside is lifting, but they can adjust the kent. So the more they lift that foil up to lure and keep bringing it closer to the surface, instead of the foil lifting the boat in a vertical plane, it's actually pushing the boat to windward. So what you can see here with these camera angles behind is this. The traveller on the main ship's a long way down, and that's because the boat is actually crabbing sideways into the wind. Normally, you'd have the main ship a bit more on the centre line, and the boat would be, say, Anytime. having zero leeway. But they can adjust the leeway they want to have on the boat by just changing the angles of their foil. Can I say how deceiving that was? They're doing 30 knots. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were saying earlier. We're, <laughs> we, we're becoming numb to it a little early in the piece, so we, <laughs> we have to keep remembering what we're seeing, the G-forces, the skill right. that it takes to sail these things. That's the problem, that these sailors all make it too easy after a while and we become a little numb to the whole process and, and we got to keep respecting it, that's for sure. Win or lose, these sailors are, are taming wild beasts that have never been created before, never been sailed before, nothing like them. Well, there are two battles going on, aren't there? There's the crews against their own boat to, as you say, any time it and then there's a battle yep, against their opponent. Way. And those poor guys just grinding away, providing all the power, all the all the sail controls are being controlled by all those all those guys in the grinders. And then they rely on really intricate hydraulic battery powered systems to to move those massive boards around. My wheel. Okay. Your shot? Yeah, pressing. Right. Speed's coming. The full-size jib is certainly helping them. Uh, they haven't had that kind of tragic end to the race that they had in the, in, in the first time. This is the umpires. USA boundary penalty, USA boundary penalty. So these guys went over the boundary. We don't see the boundary on, on our screen right now, but they went over the boundary. They're going to have to slow down, take a little bit of a penalty. It's not like they have to go back behind the other boat, like off the penalty starting clear. line, but penalty they have clear. to slow down. Cleared as you were speaking. Yeah, about 50, that? 50 meters, is that? I, I mean, yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's an obviously a difficult one yeah, to take because it's a 50 meter gain oh, base oh, yeah. or loss get off what? And so the umpires are like, okay, for the last period of time your boat's been going roughly this speed, they just draw an imaginary line and keep the boat going at that speed and say, you're slowing down and you get behind. We'll go to a replay here of the incident. Wow. Richard Slater is a mean guy, isn't he? I, I mean, <laughs> they went over. I think, the, I think the boxes on board the boat are Richard, are you, are you, can you hear us? How far over the boundary did they actually go, if you can hear us, if, if you have a number? No, I don't think we have Richard. You just insulted him. Of course he's not going to answer you. Oh, I did not. I'm on now, Kenny. Okay. <laughs> Richard, how far over did they actually, oh, was it the, actually the wing? Was it the foil that went over? Uh, white one, we'll just go back and have a quick look. We think it's the foil arm that actually went over the side, Richard. And, and tell, and we understand that it's something that is automatic. It's not speculative by you. Uh, if you can see, oh, 
and they need bigger for you. No, we got the back of the boat as well. Foil arm and back of the boat. Confirmation it was marginal, but it was a penalty and it was cleared pretty quickly as American Magic head down on their penultimate leg, the downward leg. This will be an upwind finish at the top gate, but Enios Team UK still a mile away. Off and the look foils. at them, they're off the fours. Yep. The speeds drop real quick as they attempt to get up to that top gate. Shirley, going down to you on the water, is it is it getting lighter or are these guys trying things to try and keep the boat foiling? It is softening, Nathan, just as we go into the evening here. It's sort of eight, nine knots. I mean, we're right behind uh, the American boat here. I mean, very, very impressive. Actually, it just looks so smooth and and always seem to have a, a you know a little bit of power if they go into lull and you know they they look a, a class act. Um, it's hard watching Ineos. This is the worst conditions for them. It really exaggerates and lets the world see the the issues that they have as, as the wind softens. It just gets harder and harder. Green was just meters is the lead between American Magic and Ineos Team UK. Okay. They make a heck of a lot of noise, you hear that whistling, whistling off American Magic. Where's that whistling coming from? Someone said that they had been on board and said they reminded them of a Star Wars movie and the speeders and the, the, no the noise the speeders made in one of the early Star Wars movies. Well, I had one of the I had one of the engineers off of American Magic explain to me what all these noises were last night, and he used words I've never heard before. And frankly, I I, I may be more confused now than when before. Because broadcastable words? Oh yeah, yeah, fully broadcastable words. But um, well, let's hear it. Come on. I, I I literally had to write it down. I'm gonna have to go back in and find. It. It, it, no, I just mean really. It's the com the complexity of what is inside these boats in order to get these this stuff up and down. It was a new vocabulary. I've been doing this for a while, and I had never heard anything like what he was explaining to me. We'll figure it out. We'll get it to everybody sooner or later. We've still got three months to, to get into it. So I did, I did, uh, yeah, I did, I didn't do a great job. I can tell you that. Well, I guess the, the biggest, highest pitch whistling noise must be coming off those foils. Oh, that's batters. for sure, the foils. The, but the there's lots of other little noises going in the boat, like that ratchet sound and that cow sound. We'll get to the bottom and tell you what all those things are that are making those funny noises on board. It's the cow sound that gets me. That's going off a bitch. Very good magic yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. We don't hear it as much today for some reason. I'm not so sure. Oh, I wonder whether that has something to do with the amount of wind that they're saying. Yeah. He used phrases like pulse width modulation. And uh, let's see. Even he had the name wrong to begin with. Two, one, here we go. Pulse Magic going width. for a really nice jive here. Sorry to interrupt, but very light there. It's looking marginal, just keeping it on the foil. And I, I like hearing the sound in the commentary Check booth because it gives you an indication of the speed. As the pitch of that noise changes, you can really draw your attention to how fast the boats are going. And if the pitch gets quieter, you know, oh, maybe they're about to fall off the foils. And as it winds up high, you know that Dean Barker's got that wheel shaking in his hands. American Magic heading towards the bottom gate for the final time in race 11 of this America's Cup World Series. And this will win once they complete the run. will keep them tie with Emirates Team New Zealand with one race to go. And that's Emirates Team New Zealand against Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli. And here's the key if the wind is lightning. Pressure looks okay at the moment this way. How, how interesting is this last race going to be? Well, Prada has made in my in my view, Prada has made some JBR, great gains. You had a boundary penalty and cleared. Uh, they, they, their maneuvers are smooth. Their speed looks better. 
Uh, remember, the first race out, they lost by over three minutes to Emirates Team New Zealand. And now, uh, you know, you, you got to put them right in the hunt with all of them. So, so I think they've made some really nice gains so far over the last uh, three days. And finishing at the bottom, you know, this, is, this is it. This is the, this is the race. It's going to cost it. Okay. On the top. Okay. See, not the perfect tack. They, they, they've had this problem a few go times boys, today boys. where the bow pops Dunk. up in the air like Fly that. Kind of, that's, a t that's a full touchdown right there. Let's follow this and see how long it takes them to get back up and foiling and what techniques they're using. Look at their barren way off. Did not ease the mainsail hardly at all. Traveler all the way down. They just go into kind of a beam reach. This, I don't think, was done on purpose. They were just, they just had a bad tack. And now they're just underpowered. Like, if, if you could, you'd trim the sails on, flap down, load the boat up, and, and take off. But Keep trimming on. Here they go, they're listening on board. Up the It's climbing. Starting to get going. Come on, baby. You're just wishing it to take off, aren't you? Oh, and it's in the water again. Nah, he, turned, he got greedy, Dean did. He turned up a little <laughs> early there. I wonder what angle they're doing. They must be doing about 90 true to get it up. Not going to the top mark, not going to the bottom mark, just going nowhere. Yeah, it almost looked like they were going backwards on the race course. Jeez, imagine if any of us here pull off the next jibe and climb back into this race. You know, if American Magic can't get back up onto the foil, but Ineos managed to keep it under the foil somehow, and we could have a boat race back on. I know it's wishful thinking. The lead the is dropping spot. by the second. How bit, yeah. can it be wishful when the lead is dropping? That we knew it. We knew this was going to be a yeah. race. Come on, time here. Man, that hull is sticky. The foil will be flat down. The water will be trying to cling to it, trying not to stall. Almost out, almost out, here we go, and she's off. And she's going to do 10 knots faster in about five Overdrive. seconds. They kept very calm during that process, didn't they? A lot calmer than we oh, were. Oh, it, it's like it's happened before. That's what it sounded like it's happened before. Well, we've not seen that up close before, have we? For all the boats, I'm sure they're trying their hardest to uh, figure out methods, because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Probably a bit of a, a heart stopper for Dean Barker, considering in the last race it was uh, one bad move oh, well. and it cost him the race against Emirates Team New Zealand. Surely Breeze is just dropping more and more and more. Kenny, those were our shots on the Bozan <laughs> uh, when that happened. I mean, it, it's very dramatic. It's the first time we've seen it, literally, you know, four meters from their stern. I, I mean, I'm shocked. They were, they were doing, you know, 100 and 115 degrees of the breeze. So actually heading back towards back the old wind. gate. Yeah. It's going the wrong way. Yeah. I, I mean, quite, quite stunning. Um, how dramatic. Well, that is a, that is a race, winner or loser. Um, and it requires so much patience the, and the finesse, I think, between pulling the sails in and, uh, you know, getting the flaps going. Um, they just, it's, it's not all there yet, is it? There's a long way to go. Ineos came off the foils and now they have to try to build speed again. And again, they're almost kind of going back up wind again in order to build foiling speed. Going to have to do another job. This was always the concern, or I guess the risk of these boats is that they're fantastic when they're foiling, but if they're not foiling, they're incredibly slow. And uh, the light, fickle breeze that can be here in summer, if you mid-race like this and the wind drops and you don't have that ability to plug in the code zero and get that extra horsepower, it can be a funny looking race. On a normal boat, Stephen, you'd throw up a bigger sail right now, you know, it, but it's just not possible for, uh, on boats like this. But I, I mean, it's a lot of people at home, I'm sure, are saying they got these bow sprits out there. They, they all own code zeros. Why aren't they using them? And, 
Several of the sailors have said it's just a really, really narrow wind range, but Nathan, being off the foils is a worse scenario, I think. These are the final stages of race 11 in the Prada America's Cup World Series. And right now you can be assured that American Magic will take the point and it will all come down into the final race between the Italians and the New Zealanders. Yeah. Eighteen hundred and some Coffee. forty meters is the advantage that American Magic have on Ineos Team UK. It could have been smaller after American Magic fell off her foils. And it was a tiny piece of drama. Okay. They've had their share of drama in the last That's 24 exactly. hours. Particularly when they almost tipped over. They, well, they tipped onto their side yesterday. They all have their gremlins out there still right now. <laughs> See the, the luff of that jib kind of tortured like they have a lot of cutting game on. Bye, Will. I'm always intrigued with this one word that is not my favorite word, but it seems to be something that you need to have in particularly this sport is process and little things, Kenny. When all, every time you hear Dean Buck say, my wheel. I know that sounds really tiny, but you know it's part of the process for well, everybody. For, for people watching this for the first time, I'm sure they're amazed that there's very few boats in the world that have any sort of communication systems at all. It's usually you're talking to your buddy on the bow and giving a little yell, you know? Coming up with your but own. these guys, their communication systems and how intricate they have to be at every single spot around the race course just to keep the boat flying and safe. That Maybe safe is even a bigger word here. It's really, it's really something else. The communication systems are phenomenal. American Magic, Anytime. representing the New York Yacht Club, will win race number 11 of the Prada America's Cup World Series. And their points tally will have them tied, and it's going to come down to the last race. But Patriot gets the job done oh, on well. Ineos Team UK as they glide across the finish line. <laughs> That's the look of, okay, we've had enough. Enough is enough. It's been a long day. And uh, and they had to turn it around so quick between the last race and this race. I'm sure they had, uh, I believe they had three uh, crew changes and quick turnaround. Uh, very well done. And now we wait to see what the advantage is, the time difference between their finish and that of Ineos Team UK. Nathan, as soon as you finish that race, the first thing I think they're thinking about is that one tack against Emirates Team New Zealand. That's the difference between winning the regatta and losing the regatta right now for, yep. for American Magic. A absolutely. They um, started a very clean race except for one move. And um, that was the same in the race before. And, uh, winning and losing is all about being perfect the whole way around the track. Okay, And Ineos here once again still struggling we know it's light we know they're struggling in these conditions and, and the, the big question's all going to be about the power that could rescue you there. I, wonder what you, I wonder what this orange little loop is that's been hanging off here all, all day long I, I wonder what that is it's not supposed to be there if we're looking for for arrow yeah, yeah that's the, that, that has no arrow in it i can guarantee you that so the boat's dead flat, so they're trying to take off with it, using that skeg to try and reduce wetted surface. They talk about the bustle on this boat. They've got the big wide hull, it comes in a step, and then it goes in one more time to the long skeg. So as they get higher and build speed, with wetted surface reduces and it comes up. But clearly, there is something fundamentally wrong going on here compared to American Magic, because in the same conditions, this yeah, boat's just not popping out of the water, and with it's a, not with a much bigger jib. With a bigger jib, so it's got more sail area, but not getting the same amount of lift. And once you can get the hull free of the water, the drag just disappears, and then the boat's off. But 
Okay. You know, my I sharp feeling tells here. me those red things hanging out the air. We're lucky it might be. These old, these old <laughs> things right here. Yeah. These old things we call the Problem foils. Three. Not, not performing as expected in the lighter winds. Okay. I'm sure the team are probably just as surprised about this as we all are right now. Although they might have known about this a bit earlier than we did. And about 25 not You can modify it. those things. You can modify the foils. You can 20% you can change okay, on the foils. Three. So there's a good chance that they've already got awesome. some drawings. Yeah. And there's no, there's no bulb on this one, right? So essentially a little blunt okay. nose right there. But these are these are quite wide. The span is quite wide here, fore and aft, uh, in the middle, and yeah. quite narrow at the end. It is. They are slightly different shape than, than all the other teams, aren't they? They are, exactly. So 20%, maybe that change will get them back into the race. They've got till January really before the next round of racing comes. You can see all the water coming out of there, that, all those holes. That's clearly the hollow flaps and inside there is mechanical adjustments with hydraulics and electronics wow, that are adjusting you see the that flap. water coming out. That was yeah, interesting. Yeah, full of water when they're sailing. Yep. Wonder if that's standard across all the teams or if it's just something we've just picked up there. But either way, they've... Uh, didn't make the foiling take there once again, and it's kind of back to the drawing board for these guys right now, but we're going to do a 20% adjustment on those foils. Going back at the drawing board at this stage, really, that's, that's, that's a head-scratcher. Well, in Bermuda, during the racing, people were changing their foils, modifying their foils several times. I remember when... Um, Pretty sure between the first round of the America's Cup and the second round, you know, they had a week off between Oracle, Team USA, and Emirates Team New Zealand. They stripped that boat back. They got 100 kilos out of their boat, and they changed the section shape on their foils. Different foils, though. Different foils, but still, different possible. Foils. still possible. Still but possible. But still changing the shape. It's, it's a big deal. That doesn't happen overnight, and it, it's, it's, it's kind of miracle work from some of these... Uh, some of these material engineers figuring out how to do it. When we say 20%, it's 20% of the weight of the foil. So depending upon where they have the ballast in these foils, they could actually make a reasonable section shape change. They might be able to change the area slightly. Man, there's going to be some some people scratching there's a, their there's heads the and flaps about and, it. and the flaps, see they're separated. There's one flap here and one flap here. And so those things, could they ever move independently of each other or would they go at the same I'm time? I'm confident they move independently. I think all the teams have two flaps that move independently. Shirley, I don't want to get down on any of Team UK because there's been a lot of talk about this well-funded campaign and a real chance of bringing the America's Cup back home for the very first time. What are you thinking right now? Well, I mean, I spoke to them at the end of the, the well, practice racing and, down. you know, they knew this week would potentially be painful, it would be difficult, but they have, you know, they've got some firm ideas about the changes they need to make um, over the next few weeks, but it's hard. I mean, Nathan's talking about, you know, changing the foils. They've used up their allocation of foils. You could well, build uh, six, and although you can modify them, they can't the, really uh, like build any new ones. Uh, although it takes, you know, four months to build them anyway. But they haven't got, you know, new foils coming in like like some of the other teams. I don't know. You can change a lot in the America's Cup world. I mean, you've got a team of, you know, 140 people. They're some of the best smarts on, on the planet. You can make stuff happen really quickly but i fully expect to see this boat in a few weeks time looking looking a bit different maybe that maybe that dramatic skeg that that may well have to go and um you know they may well look at the sails and the software systems as kenny said it, it's everything it's never one kind of stand out problem it's you know this is sailing very much in 3d um they're going to be looking at every single area but you know, I don't think I've seen Ben on, you know, on the back foot. Yeah, I was, because I was just trying to make uh, yeah, it's, it's a big challenge. So, here's my recommendation. You just, you just get your group, and you shut the doors, and you turn off all media, and you hunker down. Don't read anything. Just, you have to bring the troops in like never before, because... It's easy to get ugly in these spots, and these are 
you know, th these are professionals, but even professionals can get down, down, down. And when you get down, it can spread like wildfire. So they need to bring the troops in, shut the doors, turn off the televisions, and just and get to work. That, you know, and they, you know, they got a few weeks here, okay. and uh, but they got a challenge ahead of them. There's no question. Yeah. Maybe it's one of those times where you say you hunker down, you just get down and boogie and let yep. loose, and then get back on the job. Is that a is that a song, or did you just start to write a song in your own mind? Uh, there is a song there. Yeah. There is. Get down on it. That one, <laughs> oh, right? <geez. laughs> Singing. This is how bad this has gotten, Nathan. Not at all. Not at all. Sorry, guys. I just, I just switched off. <laughs> Such an encouraging to as we see Enios Team UK struggling majorly in race number 11. And that was quite revealing when Shirley said they've used their allocation of foils, a major component with this class. Only six allowed through both of your boats. And uh, stalled in the back by the way, and up high Shirley, bit, full stall. I've been told that people think yeah. that is the case. We we don't also Mate, want to uh, three quarters. make up something that may not be true. Are you are you positive that they've gone through all six? Okay. Yes, uh, yes. I, I heard it from quite a lot of sources and I, and I think you know they have to be measured and, and, and all of that so I think it's pretty much in the, in the public domain but you know 20% of a foil is a tough lot one, and yeah for Ben tough one boys this is always going to be a, a difficult a yeah, difficult week for them but I think they have a they have a plan Kenny and I mean I'm reminded oh, we're all Come reminded on. don't we of San Francisco and Oracle were 8-1 down and you know, Russell Coots stood on a chair in the middle of a room and, and gathered all his, you know, all those great people from, from that industry together and they turned that around. And I think if you can make changes quickly, it is in this world. Um, you know, you've got all the resources to do it. So, just a quick apology too, because I think uh, we may have heard uh, Ben Ainsley with a, a slight expletive, so apologies to our international viewers about that, as the Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli supporters are in the Viaduct Harbour ready for this final showdown. They like light here at this particular point, because they'll be getting ready for race number 12. Yeah, yeah. 